Humanity loves exploring space. And recently, a new space race started between China and America. But humanity wants to take a new and massive leap into space. And not even these two great superpowers will be able to do it alone. So, NASA's new Artemis program will take them back to the moon. And the first three missions have successfully launched. The first mission was an uncrewed flight that tested the rockets and technology. The second mission will take humans further into space than we ever were. And the third mission will place astronauts on the moon for a week. While they're on the moon, they will carry out a few experiments. However, the long-term goal is to use the moon as a launching pad for trips to Mars. The program, however, cost $93 billion, and that's quite a hefty sum to pay, especially for the average American taxpayer who's already feeling the economy close in. Now, the U.S. Auditor General's office has warned about an unrealistic development schedule. They also said that NASA is going to need to make its cost estimates more reliable and transparent. Luckily, Congress is still supporting NASA and its human space exploration endeavors. Even if NASA doesn't receive as much money as they hoped for in 2023, China, on the other hand, has its own fully operational space station, the Chang'e. The Chinese space program has already sent probes to Mars and the Moon. They plan to have an unmanned research station on the Moon by 2025 and to then land astronauts on its surface by 2023. Now, we've already put astronauts on the moon, but the next step isn't going to be so easy. Putting them on Mars. This is going to be extremely difficult. It's 250 times further away than the moon. And as of yet, there is no spacecraft that can send people to the red planet. Another problem that we face is even if we can send a rocket to Mars with a fully manned crew, this fuel-heavy rocket is going to need to land on a planet with an extremely thin atmosphere. And then, we're going to have to find a way to return these astronauts back home after they spent months in space. So when we take a look back at history, we know that historical superpowers used to fight for supremacy above the Earth. Back in the 1950s and 1960s, America and Russia had a very competitive competition for dominance. The Russians put the first man into orbit, and the Americans put the first man on the moon. They also had to rub it in Russia's face and plant a flag on the moon. However, in the 1970s, the golden era of cooperation was born, and the ISS began operating in 1998. Alongside 13 other partner countries, the two superpowers built what is now the largest structure in space. Not just one nation owns it, and they depend on each other for it to work. This was a symbol of what could happen when the world puts its differences aside and works together. But in reality, this isn't what actually happened. America didn't allow China to be part of the ISS, so they went off and followed their own path. Now more recently, within weeks of the invasion of Ukraine, countries stopped working with Russia. Two joint moon missions between the European Space Agency and Russia were canceled, as well as a joint Mars rover project. This project would have helped with the search for life on the Red Planet. However, if we scratch the surface, we will see the collaboration is still continuing on the International Space Station. They have to work with Russia to keep it in orbit. Americans and Europeans continue to train at Russia's space headquarters in the heart of Moscow. But the real question is, what's going to happen when the ISS comes to the end of its lifetime in 2030? And many believe that Russia has a lot less to offer partnering nations. Once they had advanced technology, but now their tech is outdated. Many people believe that the first nation to go to space will also be the first to leave. Given Russia's current circumstances and sanctions, it is quite unlikely that they've thought of an alternative for when the ISS is decommissioned, or that they've made their own space station. Now, Russia might be struggling, but China's program is on the rise. In the last 10 years, they've launched more than 200 rockets, but America's spending on space still makes China look small. China is smart and knows that partnerships offer technical know-how and money. 
They have invited other nations that aren't members of the ISS to join them. They also made a call for proposals for scientific experiments. Did you know that 72 countries have their own space programs? They have these programs because they can't afford to fall behind in what seems to be a new space race. So, we all know that space is extremely important. Our day-to-day -day lives won't be the same without it. We use satellites for almost everything. Weather forecasts, communications, bank transactions. But one of the most important uses is as a surveillance tool for nation states. And now more than ever, it's busy out there. Approximately 5,000 satellites will be launched in 2021. Compared to 20 years ago, we launched approximately 800 per year. Now space is an extensive, but also very expensive, business. And no one country would be able to explore it all on its own. So, we're seeing a few new partnerships form, now more than ever, as the world's billionaires increase. Like Elon Musk's company, SpaceX, which is already taking people into orbit. This billionaire is bringing down the cost of space travel by using a reusable rocket. But billionaire Jeff Bezos is also busy in SpaceX's space. Amazon's Jeff Bezos wants to build a commercial orbiting station. It will be known as the Orbital Reef. Helen Sharman was the first British astronaut to travel to the Soviet space station, also known as Mir. She believes that current international rivalries could be put to rest by the pragmatism of the private sector. She believes that commercialization is what brings companies together worldwide. It doesn't matter where they are registered. What matters is what benefits they give the world. The prospects of financial gain and scientific discoveries will still drive the companies to make them want to collaborate. The private companies may help to bring a new type of cooperation to space that we haven't seen yet. However, they will still need to obey the laws of their home countries, like when nations impose sanctions on Russia in 2022. Firms were obliged to withdraw from contracts with Russia. So many believe that nations will still lead space expeditions in the future, but the challenges will be immense, and it will require them to come together and work as a single group, a block of countries working together and sharing information. This will make it a lot easier for humanity to succeed in its new leap into space, but the laws of space might be an issue for our new leap. The Outer Space Treaty hasn't been updated since 1967. It doesn't talk about companies or billionaires. In 1967, space was completely different. But what do you think? Will our new giant leap into space succeed? We'll catch you next time in another video.